There's no burden of having to do anything right? yeah. with that. Mm -hmm. You just you just live the God life and let that do whatever it does. It'll come out of you. Yes. Naturally love. Right. Once you see verses like we're talking about here, Isaiah 54, 8, once you realize the heart behind what that verse says mm -hmm. is the compassionate love of God for mm -hmm. people, mm -hmm. you begin having intimacy with the God of compassion instead of having intimacy with the God of judgment. If you're having intimacy with a God of judgment, guess what is being birthed in you? Judgment. judgment. If you're having intimacy with a God of compassion, guess what's being birthed in you? Compassion. Right? And so yes. what Shannon said is so powerful because people can tell when a person is filled with compassion for their life. And that means more than anything. Yeah. Right? Yeah. And that's the heart of God in coming to Israel. He, his dream for their life was that they would be fruitful. His dream for their life is that they would have intimacy with him, and then he would be that which would give birth to fruit in them. But because they weren't having conjugation with him, but they were rather having intimacy with the flesh, he found them in a place where they were barren. Mm -hmm. And he found them in a the place where his dream for their life was far from them. It wasn't manifesting in them. And in that place, God said, I must do something. Right? It's that heart that God had. He had compassion for them because they were barren. He had compassion for them because of the deadness they were in. He had compassion for them because they were fornicating with the flesh. And that flesh was only bringing forth death in them all of the time. And so they sat in a place where they were barren. And so God has great compassion for them. And out of that great compassion for him, then comes Isaiah 54, 8, where he says, In a little wrath I hid my face from you. Yeah. Right? Yeah. So that statement is speaking to him being filled with compassionate love for them because his dream is that they have life. His dream is that they have his fruit. And instead what they have is all death. Mm -hmm. And so in his heart he says, I have to do something to end their union with the flesh. So that in their union to the flesh being ended, they can now find intimacy with me again. They can now see their union with me. And they can see my fruit being born in them. And they won't be barren anymore. And so his plan comes. And his plan is defined in, in a little wrath, I hid my face from them. His plan is defined in that. And where we get it all junked up is we immediately read that verse and then we define, I, I, think, right. I think it's Bertie that said this. Um, about wrath. There's so many great examples you could use, but we immediately define the wrath of God based on our definition of the wrath of a man. Yes. Right. Right. And we never think anything about it. And so we say the wrath of a man is like the wrath of Khan yeah. from Star Trek. That's right. <laughs> where he became angry right. with someone that he says slighted him, and now because of his anger at being slighted, He's now going to retributively respond to kill them. Yes. And that's what the, the wrath of a man is. Mm -hmm. And that's how we've, dis that's the wrath of a man. Now we've taken that picture of wrath, and then now we've used that and said, well, that's what the wrath of God is also. But God said, my ways are not your ways. Yeah, yeah. So what we can say about that is we can never take what the wrath of a man looks like and then use that to describe the wrath of God. And if we do, and we describe the heart of a man who's filled with wrath in the world as the same as the heart of God, we've missed it. We've blown it. And we're not understanding what's going on there. And so we have to see, Paul said it this way with the law. And it says the law is the revelation of wrath. So we can even connect this. And this is hard for our brains to wrap ourselves around because we still sit with our definition of wrath. Right? Right. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. But Paul said it this way. What shall we say in light of everything we said now about the law? Is the law against the promises of God? Certainly not. Right. So what shall we say about the wrath of God? Is it against human beings? Is it contrary to them having life? No. Certainly not. See, but we've described it as if it is. We've described it as if the wrath of God is against people instead of for people. Right. We haven't seen that the wrath of God is that God sees us barren because we're fornicating with the flesh. And his wrath is he comes and rejects the flesh that we're fornicating with by revealing to us that that flesh is making us barren. That flesh is keeping us from having life. And that is his wrath. Yeah. 
Right? Yeah. It's his rejection of the wisdom of the serpent as a way unto life. Right. Meaning, he looks at that wisdom that the serpent introduced to Adam and Eve, and he says, that wisdom can never bring forth my fruit. That wisdom can never give life. That wisdom can never, ever cause somebody to have eternal life. Right. And so he rejects it as the way unto life. Mm -hmm. He issues his opinion. He says that I can never bless that with eternal life. I can never bless your union with the flesh because it can't give you eternal life. Mm -hmm. So his wrath is his rejection of that wisdom as a way into life. And he comes and reveals it to us. He comes talking to us mm -hmm. about what we're busy with and reveals to us that what we're busy with isn't from him and it isn't the way unto life. That is his wrath. Right? That's why it says the wrath of God is revealed from heaven. That's why it says the wrath of God even now rests on the children of disobedience. It doesn't say the anger of God rests on the no. children of disobedience. What it's saying is wrath. God's rejected the wisdom of the serpent as a way unto life. That truth rests on the children of disobedience because when they reject life through the spirit of grace, oh, we can goodness. see the fruit of death manifesting in them. Yes. Can't we? Right. Right. Then, doesn't, then doesn't that then declare that God's rejected that wisdom as the way unto life? Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. Right. So if I'm busy fornicating with the flesh and I reject the spirit of grace, I'm going to find all manner of the works of the flesh manifesting out of me. The wrath of God, his rejection of that wisdom as a way unto life will even be revealed through me because everybody will see everything coming out of my life is death. And they'll see that that can't be the way unto life. Do you guys see that? That's the wrath of God. And I, I love the examples that I use. Because the examples, we don't see anger there. When God told Adam and Eve not to eat from the tree of the knowledge of good and evil, what was he doing? He was rejecting that as the way into life. Yes. That was his wrath. Yes. Hey, Greg, can I, can I answer yeah, yeah. Maybe I'm wrong about this.